Chapter 3. How are your feelings? I enter. The prince's power grows. Jesus Christ! The night of blood falls. I feel, I feel him, him resonate, resonate through, through the, the void. void. Ah, fucking great. Dude, can you chill for like even a single fucking second? Also, are you okay? Karkat is characteristically appreciative of the alarm call. Oh, pardon the fuck out of me for overreacting a little when my good friend, Possessed Jade, busts into my respite block at 5 a.m. Next time, I'll just pull the covers back and let her climb in. I am uninterested in that scenario. Great. Possessed Jade isn't even horny. How fucked up is that? How did you get in here? Yeah, I may be totally misunderstanding the intricacies of next-gen technology designed by an idiot micro shorts, but I'm pretty sure I locked that door. I unlocked it with my mind. Fuck. Fantastic. The prince's powers are growing, but so are mine. Wow, cool. And you just had to come in here at the ass crack of the morning to tell us this. Like you don't float around like a creepy piece of shit all day as it is. No, is that all? Nothing else to say? Carcat, it's fine. Who cares? Yeah, you're right. Sleep is abandoned. Coffee, sought. It's not like we actually have anything to wake up for. Go back to bed. No, dude, I'm up. Fuck it. I want coffee. Fuck. Fine. Fuck it. I need to use the gaper anyway. Oh, me too. Don't follow me. The rogue is also awake. Oh, what up? It's a whole ass pajama party up in here. Couldn't sleep? Jade woke us up by being creepy. Oh. Jade, why'd you do that? What? Ah, shit. There she is. I didn't even hear her follow us. Sometimes a girl just gotta get her drift on, I guess. It'd be like that. I preferred when all she did was float around and point at shit. At least that was quiet. Y'all want coffee? Sure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hate to give it up to venture capitalism, but this coffee is eons. Better than the garbage we had on the meteor. This ship is maybe the dumbest thing I've ever looked at, but it's a give and take, right? Maybe you just developed a taste for it. I used to think coffee tasted like ass, but drinking it was another thing I felt like my mom would have done. Turns out Rose drinks tea and I stalked on my own dumb butt into liking an addictive bean juice. Well, I mean, who knows what she drinks now. Dirk probably tossed a coffee machine out the space window right away. Dude doesn't believe in substances. The prince is contemplated for a moment in silence. Why are you up anyway? Well, I wasn't, but then somebody screamed like a rooster boned a teapot and had a noisy love child. Yeah, that's basically accurate. Fuck you. Maybe if you're lucky. That joke stops being funny when we've actually... Uh, is there milk? <laughs> Lamau, in the fridge. Where's Kanaya? I don't know, sleeping I hope? Last time I saw her, she was on the second floor. No, no, the third floor observation deck. <laughs> this place is huge. Oh, please. It's maybe a tenth of the size of the meteor. Yeah, dude, but that was basically a city. This is more like a castle. A castle of, I don't know, 20-something in we. Anybody hungry? I was thinking about alchemizing some pancakes. Or maybe eggs. They all basically taste the same at the end of the day. I think alchemized food is like 80% imagination. But both of you barely eat, and it's making me anxious. Damn, thanks, Mom. I, I mean, shit. Did Dad rocks it? Fuck, sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. 
Okay, but just because our relatives turned evil doesn't mean we have to act like total animals. We can still try to respect each other's identities and shit. Anyway, I'm gonna go check on Kanaya. Possess Jade, don't follow me. I am fine where I am. Cool. The Knight of Time seeks a sylph. And finds her, momentarily. You ever feel like our whole lives are eventually gonna end up like this? Just blasting through space on a sweeps long journey to somewhere, chasing after or running from some vague enemy that's sometimes a god-modded pet dog, and sometimes your dad, without the faintest fucking idea of what's going to happen when we get there? That's a little specific, but you know what I mean. Hello, Dave. Sup. Am I bugging you? Do you want me to leave you to it, or...? Not particularly, now that you're here. But shouldn't you be asleep? Shouldn't you? I need less sleep than I used to. Less food, too. Which is fortunate for the rest of you. Oh, right. I always forget about the vampire thing, because you're already an alien. And if somebody trying to send me down and get me to watch a movie about a vampire alien, I'd be like, Come on, pick a genre! Except I'd watch it anyway, because let's be honest, the only person ever trying to get me to watch something like that would be Carcat. And if he can get me to watch Serendipity, he can get me to watch anything. But you get what I'm saying. Yes. Rose even told me... Shit. Sorry. It's alright to say her name. I just don't want to remind you of that shit if I can avoid it. You aren't reminding me of her as I rarely think of anything else. I close my eyes and I see her. I open them and I see her. Well, I, I see space and the corner of my shoe right now, but her too. She's there in the glint of fluorescence shining off of the shoe. And she's out there somewhere in the sea of stars. Which just reminds me of one of the nursery stories she'd reserved to read to the young broods of grubs back then. Oh. Huh. I still kind of have a hard time picturing Rose reading to kids. Maybe a dick thing to say, but she doesn't seem like the type. I understand. It's one thing to come into the responsibilities of adulthood yourself. And another to dwell on those you were once close to, struggling with similar pressures. Growing up, so to speak, it's strange. Yeah. So, what was the story? Oh, it's a regular story about a young prince and the beloved flower he loved and lost. Flower? Like a plant? It's a fairy tale, Dave. Right. A singular wild rose he failed to cherish when he had her, and his journey of discovering what she meant to him all along, culminating in a new quest to find her and win her back. The story comments on the nature of friendship and, of course, in turn, love. How once they connect, there is no distance or circumstance that can separate them. How the worlds in each one's mind take on contours shaped by their memories of others. Places and moments and orbiting passerby become more and more entangled in the context of their mutual affections. Such as with a garden calling to mind, an engagement once declared there, or something to that fucking effect. That seems kind of whack for a kid's story. It's possible I am projecting slightly in the specific circumstances. It was just a metaphor. But in a way, I feel as if it is the greater universe trying to tell me something. It may simply stem from my longing to see her again, and how much is indicative of something more sinister. She is a goddess of light, and the only of her kind we know is alive, after all. Maybe she has wrested dominion in the entire concept of all its appearances within this frame of reference. Or within my personal frame of reference, at least and made them her own in some strange way. So I can't help but see her when I see it all. Whether it's a star or a light bulb, 
they all just leave her burnt into my mind like the blazing imprint of an after image. I mean, it sounds like you think it's because she's a god. Like she's wielding some kind of cosmic power over you. But if it was really true love or whatever, would you even know the difference? Hmm. I guess I wouldn't. Would you want to for that matter? Like, isn't feeling that strongly connected kind of how you'd want it to be anyway? I think it's how I'd want it at least. Can I sit down? Of course. It's not my observation deck. Cool. Sorry, I know you say you got your badass monster powers, but Kanaya, you look tired as hell. Not that I'm trying to psych you or whatever, but you're waxing poetic in the dark, which I guess is maybe on brand, but still. Kinda worried about you, sis. You don't have to call me that anymore. In fact, I wish you wouldn't. It really hasn't ever been accurate. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure Rose didn't serve you divorce papers before she left on her fucked up father-daughter RP. So you're still my sister. I mean, you could always decide to divorce her yourself, but I doubt you're going to find a lawyer in space. Unless Terezi is lurking in the vents somewhere, and now that I bring that up, it's actually not out of the question, so I'm kinda gonna be thinking about that one for a while. But yeah, this whole situation blows. You and Karkat didn't have to come with me. I know you have your own lives and your own mate's ship. No offense, dude, but yeah, we did. I wasn't going to let the only family I have left fly off without me. Roxy didn't have to come either. Debatable. Also, I don't just mean Roxy. Did you not just hear my heartwarming insistence that they think of you as my sister? And yeah, Roxy is rad, but our relationship is pretty fucking convoluted if we're being totally honest. You're the only person I know who's still basically the same as when I met you. <laughs> no, stay with me here. I know people grow and change and shit. It's dumb to think you haven't improved or whatever since we met 10 years ago. But Rose is gone. And Roxy isn't gone, but he isn't really the same as he was before. Maybe that's shitty of me to say, and I'm like leaning into my own internal biases, but talking to him feels different. And Karkat is the same big fucking tool he's always been, but our shit is definitely... Uh... Different than it was before. But yeah, you I can always still recognize. I am quite easy to locate in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. For what? For reminding me why I'm here. Cool. Since we are sharing in this human emotion called friendship, what about you? What about me what? How are your feelings? Oh, those. Yeah, they're pretty good. Not much to say on that front. Except sometimes your best friend disappears and your other best friend goes into a ghost coma and your third best friend fucks off to space with your dad. The dude you spent the last seven years convincing yourself isn't an egomaniacal anime villain. And who isn't actually lying in wait to completely decimate your life and your emotions and shit. Anyway, I forgot what my point was, but yeah, I'm fine. Though, what the fuck does that even mean anymore for any of us? Maybe it was naive to think that a bunch of 20-something trauma victims could run a society. Maybe this is better. At least this way we can't fuck it up worse. Cool, however, it's C existed for centuries, then we show up and manage to ruin society in seven fucking years. Maybe Dirk actually did the smartest thing he could. Fucking left. Perhaps. But he did leave arguably the two worst possible people in charge when he did. Man, I guess. But who knows, maybe Jane will turn out to be a great president. Maybe without Dirk's corrupting influence, Jenks' ass will become a symbol of peace and interspecies harmony. At least everyone can agree on something. Shit, how does this always happen? Every serious conversation I have inevitably falls apart into riffing on a casual acquaintance's ass. Not to suggest anything untoward, but you appear to be the unifying component in all of these scenarios. Could be. But all that aside, I really do think we're better off out here. At least I am. Meanwhile... So... Do you want pancakes? I can make pancakes. Do you think he's okay? Who? Dave. I don't know, you know him better than I do. Actually, I think you know him better than anybody might know anybody. You guys are like the real fucking deal. 
I guess. Wait, why the fuck am I even asking? He's obviously not fine. Are any of us... are you? Not really. Exactly. Kanaya barely even talks. Calliope won't leave their cabin. Jade just floats around like a creepy balloon that's mostly made of hair. The really fucked up thing is, I might be the most okay out of all of us, which is how you know shit has really gone globes up. All of you lost your family. I just lost some people I sort of know. And the presidential race. And thank God for that. Fuck. Can you imagine how it would have shook out if Jake hadn't shit himself on stage? Probably way less smelly. I still don't know why I let Dave talk me into it. Jesus Christ. Nothing good has ever come of me being in charge of Jack Dick. To be honest, I think Jane winning the presidency might have been the best thing to ever happen to me. Every time I've ever tried to lead anything, it's blown up in my face. Did you know that when I was a regular, I seriously thought I was going to be the guy to lead all of my friends to glory? I literally fought people for control of the team, and what ended up happening was literally every single one of my friends besides Kanaya died. Actually, she did die. Fuck. I'm zero for zero. You're kind of an intense dude. Anyone ever tell you that? No. My point is, this is the best possible scenario for me. I don't even like Earth that much. Well, you're lucky, I guess. No, I'm not. Fuck. I'm not trying to brag about it. I'm just saying, don't waste your sympathy on me. Against pretty much all odds, and despite me not deserving any of it, I ended up getting pretty much everything I wanted. Over and over again. Sometimes it almost feels like whatever slathering monstrosity of a cosmic hell beast put all this into motion actually likes me. Fucked up if true. We were in the middle of a literal universe-shattering war for the continuation of our races, and Dave and I just spent three years climbing up each other's nooks and playing video games, and I guess also saving Paradox Space. So, what you're saying is love can bloom even on the battlefield. I guess. So, do you want pancakes? Yeah. Okay.